Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's SparkerGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Well, <laughs> coffee of the month from Black Rifle Coffee Company came through again. Hang on one minute. This is a good one. My gosh. This is fantastic. Uh, Blackbeard's Delight. <laughs> How about that? And check out that artwork there. Huh? Isn't that great? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. This is a good one. Uh, what do they have to say about this? A 100% coffee and it's a dark roast right there. And it is very, very good. It's got a nice, bold flavor. But it's a, a smooth, bold flavor. like it a lot. And this morning, I'm using my Indiana Jones coffee mug. Uh, courtesy of viewer Jamie Horn. Thank you again, Jamie. I figured uh, two great characters of adventure, Indiana Jones and uh, Blackbeard the Pirate. <laughs> How about that? They really certainly do go hand in hand. Hang on, one more sip. Mm. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. And it's April Fool's Day today. No April Fool's jokes from me at all. I, I'm not very good at those kinds of uh, practical jokes. I'll leave those to the folks out there who know how to uh, carry them out with uh, a great deal of deft skill. <laughs> I just don't I just don't know how to do them very, very well. And I don't want any misunderstanding to occur uh, because of a failed April Fool's joke. But uh, happy April Fool's Day <laughs> to everyone out there. And I hope you don't get uh, fooled too many times out there. Uh, this is not an April Fool's uh, Day uh, joke. Uh, it is a legitimate question from viewer Mark Bagwell, and he writes, I've been watching Superman, Man of Steel, and I have one lingering question. What razor blade does he use? <laughs> That's a great question. And you know, the answer can be found in a video, and we'll link to the video below, and I'll just describe it to you very, very quickly. Uh, Superman uses his laser vision in a mirror and bounces off the mirror and then shaves his whisker that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Check it out. You'll see two instances of it in this uh, two instances of it in this video uh, that I'll link below. It's a YouTube video. Uh, but Mark also says, in my opinion, Superman is using stainless steel blades with a kryptonite coating. That would work too. <laughs> very, very well. Absolutely. Well, hey, hey. Listen, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. If you're listening to the podcast this morning, thanks very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate that. Boy, we've got a great show for you this morning. Let me look at my uh, my agenda here. And, uh, oh yeah, we have uh, a couple of great shaving tips this morning. We also have a couple of uh, shave den visits. Uh, some reminders for you. Some great, great refill comments. Uh, new wet shaving gear. Got some new uh, shave soaps to share with you and some great questions and comments to round it all off. A really, really terrific, terrific show this morning. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in and joining me. I really, really do appreciate it. Hope you had a great Easter. And here it is, April 1st. It's already April. My gosh, <laughs> where? My gosh, where's this year going? 2024 really barreling through, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But again, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. So let's get the show kicked off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. This morning's shaving tip comes from a viewer named Norm Christofferson. Uh, and uh, the subject heading of his email is uh, listen to you on a regular basis and enjoy the show. Hey, thanks very much for that, Norm. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Norm writes, Mark, my job has me traveling by car across several states. As I pass through smaller towns and communities, I look for small family-owned stores and drugstores. I find they often have older, no longer regularly available shaving products on their shelves, some of which has been there for years. What a great way to run across older shaving products, especially for those of us who are shaving product collectors. Landed an older shaving brush as well as old pucks of Williams shaving soap no longer made. Just a tip to your listeners 
who see an older family-owned store or pharmacy that may still have older shaving stock on the shelves. Norm Christofferson. Hey, Norm, that's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving tip. Yeah, that's great. Folks, if you're driving through smaller towns, smaller communities, and you see one of these uh, family-owned drugstores or pharmacies, yeah, check it out. They might have something there that's been there for years that uh, is still in stock on their shelves that they haven't sold. You might be able to pick up a really, really nice vintage piece of wet shaving gear (laughs) that has been there for years, maybe even decades. That's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving tip, Norm. Really, really do appreciate it. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the Monday Morning Mailbag shaving tip segment, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Norm, thanks again for a really terrific original shaving tip. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have an extra shaving tip and it comes from viewer Robert Ross. Uh, And Robert writes, Mark, after every shave, I take my three-piece razor apart to clean it. And it's a Carve Overlander aluminum version. Uh, Despite drying it with a micro cloth, it is difficult to get all the water off the top cap, especially around the threads. Q-tip to the rescue. It does a fantastic job of drying excess water that the micro cloth may have missed. Cheers, Bob Ross. Hey, Bob, thanks very, very much for a really, really terrific practical shaving tip. Uh, Yeah, the uh, Q-tip cotton swab. Boy, these really do come in handy. And you know what? I've got a Carve Overlander here myself. Thanks again to Fernie Beck. A big, big thank you. And yeah, I can see how that can really aid in getting around uh, the thread and getting around areas of that top cap around those, uh, those tabs there. Right. And even in the slots, you know, I got a little bit of buildup here because I used it recently. A little soap film right there that right there that has to be removed. Get that cotton swab in there and just kind of remove that a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going to do that (laughs) myself uh, every now and again to clean that out. And boy, that does a terrific, terrific job. Yeah. Got to remember the the Q-tip cotton swab for cleaning razors. A really, really fantastic tip. Thanks again to uh, Robert Ross. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, we have a couple of Shave Den visits this morning. Shave Den visits of sorts. Uh, First up is uh, Trevor Roeder. Uh, He sent in a shaving tip and uh, we sent him a George sketch. Uh, And he sent along this photograph and wrote, Hey, Mark, I finally got the George sketch framed and mounted. Thanks again for sending it. Wow, Trevor, thank you so much for uh, having George adorn your shaving den. It looks absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm very, very honored and flattered uh, that George is in your shaving den. Uh, That looks absolutely fantastic. Really, thank you very, very much. I'm always flattered when uh, folks... uh, get George and put him in a frame and display him somewhere in the house or in the shaving den. That's really very, very nice. So Trevor, thanks again very, very much for doing that. And thanks very much for sending the photo and allowing me to share it with all the viewers out there. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Colonel Mully, all the way from Japan, uh, he wrote, the eagle has landed. Thanks so much, Mark. George will find a nice place to hang out here. Mully, hey Mully, thank you very, very much. It's really neat that George made it all the way to Japan and will be in your shaving den. That is really, really neat to see. So thanks very much for uh, sending that along. And I'm so glad it made it all the way around the world uh, to where you are. I'm I'm, I'm so glad I put enough postage on the envelope. (laughs) Obviously, because it got to you intact and in good shape all the way from Northeast Ohio all the way to Japan. How about that? Uh, I just think that's amazing. Really, that's absolutely fantastic. So, Molly, thanks very much for sending that along. I really do appreciate it. Gentlemen, thanks so much for sending along the photos and allowing me to share George in your shaving dens with all the viewers out there. Thanks again. 
Well, this morning we have some reminders for you of uh, events taking place in April and beyond. First up again is the Great North American Solar Eclipse. That takes place one week from today, April 8th, 2024. Boy, this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. We will have links below where you can get a map and find out where the uh, area of totality is going to be in your neck of the woods. Really, really big, big event. It's coming right over Jaga County here, coming right over Northeast Ohio. And everyone in the area is really looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, school's going to be out. The kids aren't going to have a school day. Businesses are going to be shut down. They're expecting about 195,000 people to come into Jaga County alone. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be really, really something. So everyone's looking forward to the great North American solar eclipse one week from today. So mark your calendar and check out that map to find out where totality is. Uh, you might be able to uh, you know, drive to uh, that area to experience it. Wow, really looking forward to that. Also, on April 20th, 2024, is the Maggard Meetup. That's right. Uh, that takes place on April 20th, 2024, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at 124 South Winter Street, Adrian, Michigan, 49221. Tickets are $35. We will have a link below where you can purchase a ticket. And uh, I have my ticket already, and I hope to see you there. It's an absolutely fantastic event. I was there last year, really enjoyed myself. I'm going again this year. Really, really looking forward to it. And also, save the date for the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. That takes place on Saturday, September 14th, 2024, at Rivers Edge Cutlery, 4601 Lyman Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026. Again, that's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, on uh, September 14th, 2024, the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. We will have more details regarding this event as the date draws closer. So that kind of gets you up to date with reminders and uh, updates <laughs> on uh, wet shaving events and also the great North American solar eclipse one week from today. No fooling. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now right here on YouTube itself. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low, that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Mmm. That is really, really terrific. A nice, smooth, bold dark roast coffee again here it is from black rifle coffee company black beards delight boy this is a good one this is uh the coffee of the month gift that my uh, nephew jason sent to me jason his wife allison and the boys i uh, got this again this past christmas and every month i get a great coffee from Black Rifle Coffee Company in Keurig Cups. So I get 12 rounds, as they call it, of coffee from them. And this Blackbeard's Delight is a good one. Again, uh, this is a dark roast, right, right there. 100% coffee, dark roast. Yeah, really, really terrific. Like it a lot. So I hope you two are enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. And my mug, again, uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, thanks again to uh, Jamie Horn. Really, really fantastic. Look, check out that badge art there again. Look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. A beautiful, beautiful stoneware coffee mug. So again, two classic characters uh, of high adventure, Blackbeard and uh, Indiana Jones. Also, although at, uh, I guess, at opposite poles, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and again, uh, April 1st, happy April Fool's Day uh, to everyone. Uh, again, no April Fool's joke here. No April Fool's jokes here at all this morning. I'll leave that to the uh, professionals who know, <laughs> who know 
who know what they're doing. And oh, by the way, forgot to mention this. Uh, I skipped my shave today uh, because uh, we'll be reviewing a new shave soap that came, in, that came into the shave den. So I want to have a little more whisker uh, for, uh, for when I'm on camera. So just so you know, uh, and we'll talk about that new shave soap later on in new wet shaving gear, but let's get to some of these comments here and refill this morning. Beth Jones writes, uh, good Monday morning, Mark, great advice from Jake Temple. Baba's advice about keeping a razor that may be too aggressive is excellent. I have an outlaw mild razor that I have not used in quite a while. I might just pull it out of my stash this week and give it another try. Have a great rest of the week, Mark. Yeah, this is a really, really terrific, terrific tip of, uh, you know, just kind of setting aside that piece of wet shaving gear that might not be agreeable. Just set it aside, uh, work on your technique, uh, you know, and come back to it maybe a, a couple of weeks later, maybe a month later, and uh, see how it fares. And it might be, <laughs> it, it might be a become one of your favorite pieces of wet shaving gear. Really, seriously. Uh, Beth also added this comment. Uh, that's a beautiful razor, Mark, and I must say Edwin Jagger makes very nice, high-quality razor. This is in regards to the uh, review we did on this beautiful Edwin Jagger razor, which is an ebony handle, also a nickel-plated handle, uh, a handle that is nickel-plated in ebony, and uh, got this at the groomatorium at a really, really nice price point. But yeah, a really, really terrific razor. And it also reminds me, to mention that I do have another razor with a similar handle that I forgot to mention, and that came from a Global Shave, Global Shave Clubs International, which is now, I think, Swiss Shave. Uh, yeah, this is a terrific, terrific razor. This is their Java Mocha razor. And you can see, let me just show you here like this and kind of show them to you side by side. You can see that the handles are similar, but not identical. They kind of have that fat, bulbous kind of shape to them, which really lends itself for fitting in the hand ever so very, very nicely. And this uh, this Java Mocha razor from uh, Global Shave Clubs International, Swiss Shave, is a really, really terrific, terrific uh, razor, uh, very much in the style of an Edwin Jagger razor head. And uh, also, uh, the wooden handle is just beautiful. It's lighter in weight than this Edwin Jagger razor. As a matter of fact, I would say that the uh, the weight of this razor is more towards the razor head, whereas the Edwin Jagger has a much heavier handle. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the differences there. But I did want to point that out that I do have uh, I did have a handle that it was kind of like a bulbous fat kind of a handle. And uh, that uh, came courtesy of uh, Sheldon Quinn at Global Shave Clubs International. So thank you again, Sheldon, for that. And uh, the Edwin Jagger, absolutely fantastic. And I agree with you, uh, Beth. Edwin Jagger makes some really, really beautiful razors. Uh, Stan Chapman wrote, Mark, another great 3MB, the viewer morning shaving tip about holding on to shave products you don't initially care for and trying them later is a fantastic tip. I've done this myself with several products and many are now in my regular rotation. <laughs> How about that? Unfortunately, there were a few that didn't grow on me, so they were gifted or donated to a local veterans association. Well, bravo, Stan. That's an absolutely fantastic way to pay it forward. Good for you, and uh, thanks for the kind words about the uh, Monday morning mailbag. Really do appreciate that. Uh, RJ Wright W30 uh, writes, nice 3MB. And hey, that mug you were using looks like a Sunset Hill stoneware mug. I noticed the stamp on the bottom. Uh, we had one gifted to us back in the fall and ordered a bunch for the cafe. Great mugs and great company. Have a great week. Yeah, that mug came from viewer Mark Bagwell along with some Sterling coffee. And it is a Sunset Hill stoneware uh, mug. And it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the stoneware mugs are <laughs> really, really nice. And uh, that Sterling mug is uh, definitely a wonderful mug. Uh, if you missed it, check out the previous Monday morning mailbag. That's where we use it. And uh, we'll be using it again in upcoming Monday morning mailbags. Really, really terrific. And of course, this morning's uh, Indiana Jones coffee mug is also a stoneware mug. Again, thanks to uh, Jamie Horn for this. It's a beautiful stoneware mug. Uh, these really are terrific. Uh, 
you know, I've got two now, and they're they're marvelous. Stoneware mugs are marvelous. I don't know how they're made. I don't know what materials go into them. I don't know why they're called stoneware. I just know I like them. <laughs> and the Sterling mug has a beautiful badge, as does the Indiana Jones uh, mug right here. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, thanks very, very much for that, RJ. Really do appreciate it. This comes from uh, user FZ2XZ2YO4E. You know what? I wish YouTube would go back to putting real names in the comments section and not these screen handles because I looked for the individual in my email uh, alerts and I could not find uh, the individual's name. So my apologies to, well, I'll just call him user. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, he, uh, he wrote, Mark, good morning. A great beard and face wash is the King C. Gillette. It runs about $16.99 here in Canada for an 11-ounce bottle. The other nice thing is the bottle has a pump, and trust me, a little dab will do you. It was a great scent, too. I wish Gillette would make it in an aftershave, but it's a great pre-shave. Have a great day. Yeah, we'll link to this one. We talked about um, uh, pre-shave, beard wash, uh, conditioner, that sort of thing for uh, shaving away your beard and also kind of like for your daily shave as well. That was in the previous Monday morning mailbag. Uh, and here's a great recommendation on a beard wash and a men's face wash from King C. Gillette. We will uh, we will link it below. Uh, this is King C. Gillette beard wash, men's face wash, 11 ounces, pump bottle, infused with argon oil and avocado oil to cleanse hair and skin. Wow, that sounds absolutely great. Again, We'll have the link below. Thanks again to user. Really do appreciate that. Uh, all the way from Germany, viewer Christian Ortlep wrote, Hi, Mark. Very nice 3MB like always. I am so glad that my shaving buddy, Winfried Winnie Whitcup, won last week the second George in Germany. Now there is one George in the north and one George in the south of Germany. I am really glad that so many love his shaving tip. He felt so honored and told me he was so happy about it. Have a nice week. Greetings from Germany, Christian. Hey, Christian, thanks very, very much for that. Yeah, uh, uh, Winfried sent along a great shaving tip, uh, the ice spoon uh, tip. Check out the previous Monday morning mailbag. It really is a fantastic, fantastic shaving tip. And yeah, really neat that George is in uh, the north of Germany uh, and the south of Germany, and also now because of Colonel Mully in Japan. That is really, really neat. And I think he's, I think he's also in the United Kingdom, in England someplace, I think, as well. Uh, someone out there refreshed my memory. I know he is in other areas of Europe, maybe even France, too. Uh, it's just been a, such an honor to have folks frame George and have, have him adorning their shaving den uh, in, uh, in in the United States, Canada, all over the world. Really, really neat. So Christian, thanks very much for that comment. Really do appreciate it. Paul DeJardin wrote, Morning, Mark. What can I say? 3MB never disappoints. Paul, thank you very, very much for that. I'm going to try Winfried's tip, but with a twist. I'm going to store my alum block in the freezer and try that. I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, <laughs> he writes in German here. I, I can't. I can't speak German. I'll try. Danke, Winfried, uh, für den Tipp. I think that means thanks, Winfried, for the tip. I think. <laughs> Hope I didn't mangle that. By the way, I've tried Sterling Soap, and yes, it's fabulous. Only problem for us here in the Great White North is after shipping charges, the damage is $30 plus. Maybe they could set up something that could help with the cost. Well, Paul, here's hoping that Rod and Mandy... Uh, hear your message and uh, are able to accommodate you and everyone in the Great White North in some fashion. That would be absolutely great. And yeah, a great, great uh, tip uh, taken from Winfried is to uh, put that alum block <laughs> in the freezer. Paul did this and he followed up with an email with his results. And he wrote, Mark, as per my YouTube comment, I did try the frozen alum block trick. It works great. Like the spoon of the ice, the sensation is very soothing. The only drawback is you have to remember the block before you shave. Plus, if you put a block with any faults or cracks, make sure it's dry 
as the water freezing may crack the block. Have a good one, Paul. Paul, that's absolutely fantastic. Great report. Thanks very much uh, for letting us know how the frozen alum block trick worked. That's absolutely great. An outgrowth from uh, Winfried's uh, frozen, frozen ice spoon trick. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, it's great to see this develop. So folks, uh, you can either try uh, Winfried's, Winfried's ice spoon trick or uh, a variation of that from Paul, the frozen alum block trick. Uh, really, really neat development there. So Paul, thanks very much for sharing that with all the viewers out there. Really, really do appreciate it. This comes from Jay the Horn. I always wear a fragrance whether I'm at the house or going out. I personally do five to eight sprays depending on the type of scent. Cooler weather scents get lighter sprays because they're heavier scents and light summer freshies get a couple extra sprays. I like it when people can smell me, but with that being said, know your environment. Don't do 10 sprays and go into a hospital or closed working office environment. Uh, but yes, I enjoy forcing... <laughs> I enjoy... P I <laughs> But yes, I enjoy forcing people to catch a whiff of my fragrance. <laughs> Thanks very much for that, Jay the Horn. I really do appreciate it. I read someplace that it's a good idea not to apply aftershave or cologne if you're uh, taking a flight someplace because you're in such a closed environment on that, on that airplane. Uh, and uh, you don't want to kind of uh, have that waft all around and some, it might be a, a scent that someone doesn't find agreeable. That's what I've heard. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard something similar. And Jay the Horn, thanks very much for those comments. Really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Mike H. wrote, Hi, Mark. Great Monday morning mailbag. Thank you. Fantastic segments as always. Yes, the Cube 2.0, unscented, lasts me a long time. I use it five days a week as a pre-shave. And I would safely say that I average 10 months of use per cube. Wow. <laughs> it's one of the best shaving product values out there. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week. Be safe and be well. Best regards as always, Mark. Uh, Mike H. Mike, thanks very much for that report because we did have a question in a previous Monday morning mailbag as to how long the Cube 2.0 from Phoenix Shaving lasts. And I, I never really gauged the duration of how long I use uh, a cube. But uh, Mike H. says here again, uh, 10 months, five days a week. When he uses it five days a week, he's getting 10 months uh, of use per cube. Wow. Mike, thanks very, very much for that. Really, really helpful answer. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, this comment comes from uh, viewer Eric Knighton uh, regarding Phoenix Shaving Coconut Bay with Lime. And he writes, God, I love that soap. My wife says it smells too much like an old man, though. Sadly, I only use it on occasion. <laughs> well, there you go. There's another instance where someone really, really loves the scent and it's that probably doesn't do too much for someone else. But yeah, I agree with you. I like uh, the Coconut Bay with Lime as well. I think it's a terrific, terrific scent. And as we discussed in a previous Monday Morning Mailbag, Phoenix Shaving, uh, and Mark Bagwell pointed this out, Phoenix Shaving has uh, just a wonderful variety of Bay Rum Shave Soap. So check them out. They're all very, very good. And we like the... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but there's a bird that is running into my window over there. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to stop him from doing that. I've been recording the show and having to stop recording and get up and try to figure out how to stop him from doing that. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Well, anyhow, if you have any suggestions on how to stop a bird from hitting your window, please come below and let me know. Uh, okay, we'll get back to the show. Uh, and Mark Bagwell pointed this out. Phoenix Shaving has uh, just a wonderful variety of Bay Rum Shave Soap. So check them out. They're all very, very good. And we like the uh, Phoenix Shaving Coconut Bay with Lime. Absolutely fantastic. And the one Baba wrote, Mark, if I heard you correctly, George was in the minors with 1,600 papers. Yeah, uh, that's what uh, I uh, mentioned uh, last week, I think it was, previous Monday morning mailbag, 
regarding uh, my comic strip cartooning career. I was with King Features, and they took my comic strip, George, and they put it into a package, and then it went out to weekly newspapers, uh, 1,600 weekly newspapers. And I said that it was kind of like being in the minor league with King Features. Even though they're a very, very well-established, well-known uh, newspaper syndicate, uh, they handle comic strips like Beetle Bailey, Hager the Horrible, Blondie, Dennis the Menace, that sort of thing. So uh, I was in good company, but uh, I kind of regarded myself as being kind of in the minor leagues, hoping to get to the bigs <laughs> someday. Uh, anyhow, uh, Baba wrote, Mark, if I heard you correctly, George was in the minors with 1,600 papers. Well, George is now in the majors with over 10,000 subscribers. Welcome to the big leagues. Uh, <laughs> thank you very, very much, Baba. I really do appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you to point that out. And yes, I'm very, very grateful for the uh, 10,000 plus subscribers that this channel has. And hopefully uh, we'll get to uh, 15,000 subscribers before you know it, because when we get to 15,000 subscribers, that's when we're going to be doing another giveaway. But we'll have more information regarding that when we get closer to the 15,000 subscriber mark. So thanks again, Baba, for reminding me to mention that. Really, really do appreciate it. And thanks again for the kind words regarding George and uh, the 10,000 subscribers that the channel has. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, Hendrix Classics and Company is launching a brand new shave soap. It launches tomorrow, April 2nd, and it's called Taxman. <laughs> How about that? Just in time for April 15th, Tax Day. How about that? It's got that beautiful metallic label. And check out that artwork. Yeah, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful scent. Really, really nice. It is fresh and woody. And it does remind me of, of money in some ways. That just came to mind. And uh, as, uh, Pete wrote, as Pete writes here, Tax Man is meant to be fun. April 15th is just around the corner. Our country may be divided on many issues, but not on paying taxes. Everyone hates doing taxes and paying them. Uh, we'll have a contest or contest for Tax Man. We've taken great inspiration from the Beatles song, Tax Man. There's a backstory on that song. The Beatles hit it big in the mid-60s. The UK had a progressive tax system. It was progressive to the point that the Beatles all had to pay 95% of their income, and thus this song was the result. And we'll get a link to the uh, video where you can uh, sample the song and check out the lyrics and that sort of thing. Uh, and Pete also goes on to talk about the scent of Taxman. Uh, and this is an homage to One Million Lucky by Paco Rabanne. It's a woody fragrance for men. One Million Lucky was launched in 2018. The nose behind the fragrance is Natalie Gracia Cetto. I think I pronounced that correctly. It's spelled G-R-A-C-I-A dash C-E-T-T-O. I think I, I think I got it correct. If I didn't, my apologies. Uh, and uh, here, are the, here are the scent notes. Top notes are plum, Ozonic notes, grapefruit, and bergamot. Middle notes are hazelnut, honey, cedar, cashmere wood, orange blossom, and jasmine. Base notes are amber wood, patchouli, oak moss, and vetiver. It is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. And to me, it has a nice, fresh, woody kind of fragrance. It's not at all organic on the dirt side of the uh, of the spectrum it's more it's more fresh and lively and woody in that sense yeah and it, and it just has you know when i first sampled it i guess it's just the name and the artwork it reminded me of paper money but it really is a fantastic fantastic scent this is the one we'll be reviewing we'll get, we're going to get that together and, and get a review done on this which is why i'm waiting a day uh, to get a little more beard growth to try this out Fantastic, fantastic soap base from Hendrix Classics and Company. Really, really terrific. If you've seen any of the reviews I've done on their shave soaps, they have a marvelous, marvelous 
uh, shave soap base that just lathers beautifully. So check this one out, Taxman. It launches tomorrow from Hendrix Classics and Company. When it does launch, we'll provide a link below in the description. And uh, also, the, and the aftershave is available. And again, that beautiful, beautiful metallic label. It really is fantastic. It pops when you see it in person. It really does. And uh, the lighting here doesn't really do it justice, but you can see how reflective and, and awesome the metallic label is. It really is terrific. Looks great in the shaved den, no doubt about it. Uh, from Hendrix Classics and Company, Tax Man, my thanks to Pete Hendrix and everyone at Hendrix for sending this one along and allowing me to share it with everyone on the channel. Pete, thanks again very, very much. Well, Twee is back at Phoenix Shaving. And as they write, Twee, our longtime seasonal, long running homage to green Irish tweed, one of the most epic creed creations of yesteryear. When it dropped back in 1985, it took the fragrance world by storm. Similar to cool water, yet more complex and, dare I say, even more masculine. Worn by the likes of Cary Grant, Sinatra, Clint Eastwood, to even Ozzy Osbourne, if you can believe that. Needless to say, this fragrance is pretty epic. Being such a versatile, non-overbearing scent, it may be worn any time of year or time of day. Upon first sniff, one is immediately whisked away to the dewy, undulating green landscape of Ireland. Here's a scent profile. Top notes, lemon verbena. Heart notes, iris and violet leaf. Base notes, mysore sandalwood and ambergris. A memorable herbal green opening peppered with moist dead leaves and Irish moss. The fragrance of Twee is rich, fresh, sporty, and unforgettable, just like you. Twee from Phoenix Shaving will have links below. Viewer Tyler Fike sent along this review of Maggard Razor's SS70 Razorhead. And Tyler writes, good morning, Mark. So I bought this razor head about a week or so ago. I paired it up with a Phoenix Shaving 3.25 inch stainless flare tip handle. It's awesome. I was a little skeptical of the 0.70 blade gap, but decided to go for it as I've been diving into some more aggressive razors lately. I've actually found that the five plate and even the six plate sometimes on my Rockwell 6S have become my daily driver. The SS70, to my surprise, is extremely mild in feel. Hardly any blade feel, as a matter of fact. That being said, however, it is very efficient. I've gotten some very nice shaves with it, and it's also going to become a daily driver. I would put its smoothness and efficiency along the same lines as the Phoenix Shaving Metaphor Razor. Thought you would enjoy taking a look at it. Per usual, I hope you have a great weekend, and God bless... Tyler. Hey, Tyler, thanks very, very much for this review of the SS70 uh, Safety Razor Head from Maggards. Uh, it's $42.95. It's CNC machine stainless steel. It's a 0.70 millimeter blade gap, uh, laser etch serial number and Maggard logo, polished stainless steel. The width of the head covers the tabs of the blade and the uh, overall uh, weight of the razor head is 1.1 ounces or 30 grams. So there you go, folks. We'll have a link to it below where you can check it out yourself. Uh, Tyler says it's a winner, and uh, it absolutely looks like a fantastic, fantastic razor head. If you've got uh, a favorite stainless steel razor handle looking for a brand new stainless steel razor head, uh, something that could be your daily driver, check out Maggard Razor's SS70 Safety Razor Head. Thanks again, Tyler. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Mark Bagwell sent along this review of Sterling West Indies Lime Shave Soap. And Mark writes, Imagine lying on a beach in the West Indies, a gentle breeze blowing with the fragrances of the islands. Now, I can't promise you a beach on an exotic island or palm trees swaying in the wind, but I can tell you about a shaving soap that will make you feel like you're there. I'm speaking of Sterling's West Indian Lime Shave Soap, Splash, and Balm. 
This is an amazing blend of West Indies lime, bergamot, lemon, and vetiver with a hint of musk to round it out. A beautiful citrus. Sterling soaps are known for creating mounds of slick, rich lather that caresses your face as well as protects. And best part of all, Sterling only costs $14.25 for a 5.8 ounce container or a 4.5 ounce refill for $11.25. And that's a whole bunch cheaper than a trip to the West Indies. Unfortunately, this is only a seasonal scent from Sterling, so don't wait too long to order your West Indies lime, or you might have to purchase tickets to the islands. Sterling's West Indies lime, it's certain to be a crowd pleaser. Mark, thanks very, very much for a terrific review. It sounds absolutely wonderful. A seasonal scent, folks. So we'll have links below. Get up and check it out. And, and order some before it's gone. A seasonal scent again from Sterling West Indies Lime Shave Soap. Mark, thanks again for a terrific review. Viewer <laughs> Bob LaRoe sent along a review of a new version of the Mercur Futur, a new clone version from GBS. Now, here's my original uh, Mercur Futur right here. I've also reviewed some of the clones that are out there. This one here, my left hand, is from Vanderhagen. I thought it was a, probably one of the better clones out there that I've tried. Well, Bob has tried out a new version, a new clone of the Mercur Futur from GBS. Uh, and he writes, I got from Amazon Vine a GBS version of the Mercur Futur, and it's better than most of the clones I've tried. The only issue is that after my shave, I had to dislodge the blade from the top cap, which can be tricky, and I recommend starting one number lower than you normally use as it seemed a bit aggressive. Overall, it is superior to other similar ones and at an affordable price. Now again, folks, this is the GBS Chrome Adjustable Men's Double Edge Safety Razor, and it also comes with 10 GBS Platinum Blade Refills. It's a Mercur Futur clone, and Bob likes it a lot. Bob also wrote a, uh, a review of it that is on Amazon. We will link both to the product and also to Bob's review. Here's some highlights from uh, Bob's review. You can read it for yourself. We'll have the link below. You can read the, you can read the review in its entirety. Uh, but uh, here's some highlights. This unique design has been copied, and I've tried several. I didn't keep them. This one's a keeper. It's a high-quality adjustable razor that works just like the higher-priced ones. Overall, this is superior to others, and by that, I mean clones of this unique design. Of course, it's made by a trusted company, not some unknown brand where you're taking a chance. No worries here. GBS is a trusted name in wet shaving. It looks great and works great and is definitely superior to others. Hey, Bob, thanks again for your thoughts on this new Mercura Futur clone from GBS and also for sending along the review. Again, folks, we'll link to both the product and also to Bob's review of a new cloned version of the Mercura Futur from GBS. Bob, thanks again. Very, very much. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. This email comes from viewer Jeff Bradley, and Jeff writes, Mark, I wanted to share this recent find on eBay as an inspiration to our new shavers who may be looking for a vintage Gillette or other branded estate razor. I look at the razors up for auction frequently, but buy few of them due to bad condition and excessive prices. I also occasionally buy vintage brushes and restore them for myself and friends. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a shaving set for sale that was in a Ziploc bag. In the bag was a vintage brush, a cuticle brush, and a razor. 
It was hard to see in the listing photo of the bag, but I recognized the razor as a Gillette Fat Boy. There was no mention of any details about the razor. I ended up winning the auction for $10 plus modest shipping. To my surprise, the kit did include a Gillette Fat Boy F2 in very good condition. I cleaned and sanitized it, ran it through my ultrasonic machine twice, and polished it lightly with some Flitz polish. I touched up the numbers with some black Testor semi-gloss paint. The razor looks like it just came out of the $1.95 package and it shaves like a dream. My message here is to our wet shaving comrades is that you really can find a great vintage Gillette for only a few bucks if you look closely. As you mentioned this week in Monday Morning Mailbag, I have a soft spot for these vintage pieces. I also agree with Matt Pisarsik that razors aren't made the way Gillette did with stamping brass because it is just too hard and expensive to do today. They do indeed stand the test of time with a little care and can be handed down for generations. Thanks, Jeff Bradley. Wow, Jeff, that's absolutely fantastic find. Wonderful, wonderful looking fat boy. And with a little TLC that you included here, you've got a like new vintage Gillette fat boy. It looks absolutely fabulous. Wow, my gosh, congratulations. And yeah, that is inspirational to everyone in the wet shaving community that these razors can be found in really good condition and you just give them a little bit of TLC and boy, they come back looking brand new. Absolutely. And you can get them at really nice price points. But as Jeff points out, you have to look. You really have to take your time, look, you know, do, you know, do your homework, that sort of thing. Know what it is that you're looking at. And uh, yeah, you could you can find one of these vintage Gillette Fat Boys at a really nice price point in really, really good condition or in condition or in a condition that you can, you know, restore with a little bit of TLC. Absolutely fantastic find, Jeff. And thanks for sharing it with all the viewers out there. Very, very inspirational. Now, he also followed up with another email. And he wrote, Mark, I also want to show off a Gillette Slim J3 that was recently refinished by Chris Spencer of Backroads Gold. This is the first razor that I have sent to Chris, and I am very pleased. As you can see, it looks fantastic and is a great shaver. His services are very reasonable, and he has a fast turnaround. Just another option for folks to consider for a solid vintage razor that looks fantastic. Thanks, Jeff Bradley. Again, Jeff, wonderful looking razor. Yeah, and it's another great option for those of us out there who happen to have maybe a Gillette Slim or a Fat Boy that's in pretty good condition, shaves great, but we want to we want to give it that little extra bump in look and finish and uh, something that's going to last for uh, uh, generations ahead, so to speak. Yeah, check out Backroads Gold. Mark Bagwell has mentioned them before, as have other viewers, and they are very, very good service. They come highly recommended by a number of viewers, is what I'm saying. And Jeff Bradley agrees. So thanks again, Jeff, for sharing your uh, really beautiful replated, refinished Gillette Slim J3. And also, thanks for a great look at that uh, new vintage Gillette fat boy that you have. Thanks again, Jeff. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, here's a follow-up from viewer Robert Ross regarding a smidgen of shave soap. And Robert writes, Last week, I told you how I reduced my shave soap usage by 93.75% over the past two years of wet shaving. Well, here are photos of using one thirty-second teaspoon, a smidgen, of soap to three-quarters teaspoon of distilled water to prove my point that it's possible. To make the soap last for my final pass, I squeeze excess lather from the brush into my hand, I use that lather to finish up my shave. Cheers, Bob Ross. Bob, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> wow. 
Folks, give this a try and let us know uh, if you're getting the same results as Bob. Bob has really uh, taken us down this rabbit hole of uh, soap economy and getting heaps and heaps of lather from it. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really do appreciate you sending along the information and also the photos. Bob, that's absolutely fantastic. Just a smidgen of shave soap and three quarters teaspoon of distilled water. And he's getting heaps of lather, enough for a three pass shave. And yeah, he's squeezing the excess lather out of the brush uh, into his hand. I do that when uh, I do my uh, head shaves. I take, uh, if you've seen any of my head shave reviews, I'm taking the lather off the brush and I'm uh, moving it around on my head uh, uh, to make sure that there's some protection there as I'm doing my touch-up pass with my razor for my head shave. So yeah, perfectly acceptable technique and I think that qualifies as a third pass. Absolutely no problem at all. So Bob, thanks again for a terrific, terrific update. Really do appreciate it. This comment comes from viewer Ashley Carrier 6606. Uh, and Ashley Carrier writes, I'm currently five shaves into a 15 shave commitment to using only my Vikings Blade Emperor adjustable razor. Had mine a while, but only used it seldom as my early impression was meh. Frankly, I first bought the Emperor because it looks awesome. But it wasn't until my third consecutive shave that I realized the head, by design, has an aggressive side and a mild side. I don't think Mark mentions this, and it is likely that many owners don't realize it. The side with the scalloped safety bar is the aggressive side. On six, that side, to me, has a blade feel comparable to my Futur. The smooth bar side is, to me, comparable to a vintage tech. I use the tech side for lips, chin, Adam's apple, and especially for an against the grain third pass. Any of my prone to nix areas. Again, I think this is a feature most owners overlook. Now, I have mentioned this in the past uh, regarding these razors, uh, Ashley Carrier, because uh, I love <laughs> the Vikings blade razors. Absolutely love them. And I love the Emperor Adjustable Razors. I have them right here. Uh, let me start with this one right here. This is the Chrome version. And it comes in a great case. And boy, these are, yeah, and I agree with you. These look awesome. But you are correct. The scallop side right there and a straight bar side. And yeah, just, it is an asymmetrical design. And I, and I, and I do mention this in my reviews. I may have failed to mention it in that particular review that you were commenting on. But it is a terrific, terrific adjustable razor. Wonderful, wonderful heft. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully chrome. This has a nice matte chrome finish to it. Uh, the razor head is very, very maneuverable. The end tabs can, can be felt uh, on, on the sides of the razor head, but that makes it a little more maneuverable. And it's not a deal breaker because those end tabs don't get in the way. Uh, and it adjusts from one to nine, and it really is a terrific, terrific performer. Love the heft, love the look of it, love the shave that it delivers. And yeah, the asymmetrical head is something that I take advantage of because uh, as you're shaving, if you want to go a little milder without having to adjust the, uh, the actual dial on the, on, on the collar here on the neck, you can just flip it over and then <laughs> get something a little milder. Or I have found that you can use it as just a, a regular double edge safety razor Flip it back and forth. I find that works as well. Let me show you the Augustus. The Augustus also has a beautiful, beautiful plating job. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. Isn't that gorgeous? These razors really, really are terrific. And they are twist to open like that. And again, adjust from one all the way up to nine. Really, really just terrific. Beautiful heft, beautiful balance. Really, and they all come in at a really, really nice price point. Uh, now, I have a soft spot in my heart for Vikings Blade because they really uh, came on to the channel uh, early at its inception, and uh, I discovered their products, and I talked about their products, and they gave the channel a lot of support. So, really, I, I really do have a soft spot for, for a Vikings Blade, but they make a terrific, terrific razor. I really like I really like their razors a lot. Let me show you one more in the Emperor line. This is the Emperor Meiji. 
Now, we talked about the Fat Boy just previously. Now, if you want a razor that'll give you a Fat Boy experience, check out the Emperor Meiji. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can see that it's shorter than uh, the other Emperor razors. And it has a Fat Boy look and feel to it. May have been patterned after the Fat Boy a little bit. Not entirely sure. Can't really, don't quote me on that. But that's the way it impresses me. And it really is a terrific, this is definitely a favorite. And I've used this for many a review as well. Twist to open, adjust from one to nine. A little more compact kind of feel to it. Built like a little tank. Really, really terrific. Uh, yeah, I like this one a lot. And I love that red accent there towards the bottom knob. And it really is just a really is a, a, a wonderful, wonderful razor. Again, the razor head is similar to the other two emperors. Scalloped on one side. Well, here, here's scalloped on one side and straight bar on the other. Yeah, really, really just a terrific, terrific razor. So uh, give the, uh, if you're looking for an adjustable razor, uh, give the Vikings Blade Emperor razors a look. Uh, they really are very, very good. And again, they come in at a really, really nice price point. And the quality is really, really stellar. I mean, terrific, terrific quality made razors. And uh, I like these a lot. So again, to Ashley Carrier, my apologies for perhaps not mentioning the asymmetrical razor heads on the Emperor line of razors from Vikings Blade. But I have mentioned it in the past. And uh, as I say, it's a great advantage if you don't want to uh, dial up or down while you're shaving. You just flip that razor head and you can go a little more aggressive or a little more mild. Uh, and, or you can use it as a regular DE razor. I, I, I do that all the time as well. Yeah, love, love, love these razors. They're absolutely terrific. Again, from Vikings Blade, the Emperor line of razors. The uh, Vikings Blade Emperor and Frosted Chrome, the Vikings Blade uh, Emperor Augustus, and also the uh, Vikings Blade Emperor Meiji. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic razors. Check them out. Ashley Carrier, thanks very, very much for your comment. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.